Hi. Hi, hi. I, I thought I'd have something nice for you to look at, but I got lazy. So good to see everybody here. Um, if you are watching live and you would like to tell me who you are, um, just go ahead and add in the comments. I can see your handles, but I can't always tell what your name is. So I would love to know See, Nancy Murphy, that's a, that's a handle that I can tell who it is. Hi, Nancy. But from a lot of you, hi, Isabel. <laughs> I just like to be able to say hi to people, especially, hey, Kathy, hi, Terry. I like to be able to see the names of people when they show up. I don't know if you guys are all uh, old enough to remember Romper Room. That's what I, hi, Andrea and Holly. There was a TV show on when I was a kid. Hi, Nicole. And the lady would hold up a mirror. Hi, Debbie. And she would say the names. Yeah, she didn't say the names of all the kids she saw. She was just making it up, but she never said my name. I think I mentioned this in one of my earlier Periscopes, so I figure I'd like to at least say hello to the people who are here. And it's nice because I can know what your names are now. So um, the question that I'm going to answer this week uh, came from a reader, and she is a, she's actually a preschool teacher, but she was told that her voice is too kind and too nurturing, and that that was a problem. And that was all I got from her. Um, but she was very concerned that the people she worked with, um, yes, Nancy, a lot of us are Jennifers. There's so many of us. I was born in 1970, and there's just so, so many of us. She was concerned that uh, the people she worked with didn't understand the needs of early childhood. And because I don't, you know, I don't have the opportunity to observe this teacher or anything. I don't know for sure what the issue is, and I also don't think it's specific to um, to early childhood. I think this is an issue for teachers of literally any age, and I think this can go all the way up through college instructors. I think this is this can be a universal problem, the issue of um, whether or not you should be lean, you know, air toward being too nice or air toward being too uh, too mean, and this was definitely definitely a problem for me. I had my own students tell me, you're too nice. Um, and so, and I know that I'm a very conflict avoiding person anyway. So um, I thought this would be a really good one to talk about because I think it doesn't even matter what age you're working with. You can definitely suffer from being too nice, but I think there are some teachers who feel that they have to be mean. And so, and I think they take it way too far in the other direction. I think there really is a nice balance that you can strike. Um, and so I wanted to talk about that a little bit. So the, the thing that I have learned over time with kids, and this is, this is a problem for me with my own kids. I have uh, three kids ages um, 8, 9, and 11. And I know that I don't want to be... A jerk to them and I know that there are sometimes I can be a pushover with them and so but then and I can see this is coming up in some of the comments if people make me sometimes I can be so nice until I'm not and then I go way to the other side of the meter and then I'm just screaming and that's not good either that's not good at all and so I think that the the word that comes to mind for me when I'm really being effective is and this is just what works for me business-like. It's not being mean. It's being serious and not being boring, but basically keeping the phrase in your head of, it's time to get down to business. And so this manifests itself in a lot of different ways. Um, one thing that used to be a big, big trigger for me when I was a teacher is I taught middle school kids and they would make me laugh all the time and they would say funny things. And once that kid, <laughs> once that kid figures out that he can crack me up and it's not that hard to do they would they would try to do it all the time and so I would be standing there trying to get everybody's attention and some kid would make some wise remark and I would give him a little smile because I like building relationships with my students and thank you Mondo <laughs> and so uh and so, I'm sorry, I got distracted by a comment. I can't read it. So they would say things to me. You know, they'd make little cracks and everything. 
And then, and I'd start laughing, and then it would be like, oh, great, that's wonderful. You know, now I've lost everybody because then somebody else would try to do it, and then we would be off topic. And I know that for the kids who were ready to, like, get to work, it was probably annoying, you know? And so I think the whole the whole rule about don't smile until Christmas, I think there's something to that, honestly. I mean, that's definitely been one that we as teachers have said, you know, no, 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 that's a crock. You know, you, you need to build relationships. You need to be kind. And I think that's true, that you do need to be kind, but they need to know that you are not their BFF. They need to know that you are the adult in the room and that you're, you don't mind being the person who's going to be the party pooper and say, no, it's time to get to work now. And so I find that if you can just sort of keep it to where you are not reacting when they're trying to goof off, and I mean not reacting in a way where you're just like, oh, I'm going to be your buddy and laugh with you, because then you can never get them on track. So thanks for the hearts, by the way. All those hearts, you guys must be tapping on the screen a lot. I appreciate it. So business-like is a good term to sort of keep in your head in terms of your overall composure. And I read a, a post today, as I was looking around for other people's thoughts on this, and it was a, a guy, and, and I've got to f figure this out who it was, but he was talking about how important it is to be serious, at least in the first half of a class period, which I thought was really interesting. I had never thought about it that way, but that makes a lot of sense because if you kind of lose them early on and you get a little bit too goofy with them, it's really hard to get back off on, on track. So keeping the first half or could first two thirds of a class session m more business-like, then you can chill out and relax with them near the end and more show more of your human side. Yeah, I thought that was a really good simple rule of thumb too. And another thing, and this is something I thought about for this particular teacher, yes, Goofy and Weird does sell. It does. And I just think you need to be careful about when you're using it and if you're using it deliberately to kind of sell your enthusiasm for a project that you're doing. I think it's super important to share lots of personal stories about yourself. Very important for bonding with your students. But it is. It's a science and an art to balance that out. And if, if you can really... Here's the thing. Here's the, the big thing for me. Their friends, people who are going to fool around and, and hang out with them and, and just be their buddies... Those people don't necessarily have your kid's best interests in mind. They don't care so much about that kid's academic success. You do. And so it's a very loving gesture to say to them, we're going to play in about 30 minutes, but right now it's really important for you to get to work and to get this done because I care that you learn this. And so it's not so much that you're being boring. It's that you really care about them and you want them to learn. So here's another thing that this, this teacher may suffer from this problem. When the other teacher said she sounded too nice, one of the things they might mean is that she might be phrasing things in a way that makes her sound like a pushover. For example, if you say to a child, okay, do you want to get your stuff out and get to work? If you say, do you want to, which is kind of just a verbal tick for some teachers, some kids will be like, no, I don't want to. Or if you throw the word okay on at the end of your directives, so if you say to everybody, you know, get your books out, okay? And then it, you sound like you're begging for it. And so just making that little tweak to the way you say something, instead of adding that okay or that little question mark at the end, you just say, it's time to get your books out. Please do that now. And just end your sentences with a period instead of with a question mark. And I think that's the general idea here. You're not asking them for something. And, and it's funny because if you say, can you please... You're saying, will you please do this? But if you just say, please do this, it's a directive. So think about the way that you're actually phrasing things. Um, when I moved from teaching middle school to college, I was pretty scared because <laughs> I knew, oh my gosh, I'm teaching adults now. And I may be teaching even adults who are older than me. And, you know, I didn't have a PhD or anything. So I thought, this is, I got to be taken seriously. And I had actually spoken to a friend of mine uh, right before I started who was also teaching at the college level. And he said, you better be careful because a big part of your job is based on the student evaluations of you. So I thought, okay, <laughs> I've got to do, I've got to make sure that they really take me seriously. So it was the first time that I had ever really applied that don't smile until Christmas rule. And I remember deliberately the first day of classes really, really trying to to just be very 
very serious. I don't know if you all have ever seen the TED Talk about the power pose. It's wonderful. If you just Google that, the power pose, or maybe it's the power posture. I think it's the power pose. Um, and it's meant for women, but I think a lot of men could use it too. Hey, Jason. Um, it's just a matter of how you carry yourself. You know, if you really throw your shoulders back and deepen your voice a little bit. I don't know if she mentioned this. I may have heard this one from Dr. Laura. But talking about women who speak with a really high voice, and it's harder for kids and other people to take you seriously. So if you have that issue, it helps to kind of maybe lower your voice just a little bit. And you may be taken a little bit more seriously. So there, are, there really are a variety of things. And I think if anybody has ever said to you, you know, you're too nice, I think it's wonderful to be nice. And I think it's wonderful to be kind and to care about your kids and to communicate that to them. But I think when somebody says you're too nice, what they're actually saying is you are, you're getting walked on or your kids don't respect you as much as they could or you're not being assertive enough. And so you're not standing in your power. That's right. <laughs> and so I think it would really help, honestly, to um, to videotape yourself and just see how you come across. And there there really could be these little tweaks. So I'm going to just review really quickly for maybe for people who um, just stopped in a little bit later. One is make sure that you're not um, smiling in reaction to your kids goofing off. If it's time for you to be serious, then you can be very, very serious. Oh, another thing, and I've mentioned this before too, yes, getting your national boards helps so much because you videotape yourself and it's crazy. Um, do not try to talk over your kids when they're talking. If you're trying to get your class's attention, I did a video about this a while ago called The Five Second Solution, but I'm going to share that here right now too. It drives me crazy when I see a teacher or a speaker. I've seen principals do this in faculty meetings. They start talking, thinking that that's going to quiet the faculty down. And teachers will do this to students. They'll start giving directions, and the kids are not listening. They're talking. And the teacher will just keep going. And, dude, you are wasting your breath when you do that. You need to stop. You need to just stand there and stop and just wait. And you don't have to be obnoxious about it. You don't have to give them a dirty look. You just have to wait. If they're really not paying attention, you can just hold your hand up and just, this is just, especially if you're older, when you're with younger kids, you can do the high five and the give me five and everybody's all on board. Class, class, yes, yes, all that. But with the older kids, sometimes you need to just do something more just like, hey, I'm trying to get your attention. And then do not talk until everybody is quiet. That Those last two kids who are talking, they will shut up if they're the only ones talking. Sooner or later, they will realize that their voices are the only ones that anybody can hear, and they'll get embarrassed, and they'll, they'll listen. But you are um, you're commanding more respect, and you're communicating power by just waiting and not just rushing in there to try to speak as quickly as you can and just talk over them and hope that they hear you. Also, speak a little bit more slowly. Do not rush with your, with your directions. Take your time. Pause if you need to. And don't laugh at your own... Well, no, I was just going to say don't laugh at your own jokes. I did have a podcast about nonverbals. I interviewed a guy named Jack Schroeder, and I can't remember which episode it is, but it's called How Your Nonverbals Impact Your Teaching. And he was talking about watching teachers who laughed at their own jokes, which I actually think is okay to do if your kids are laughing with you, but if you're the only one laughing and it's that nervous kind of laughter, again, that also communicates a lack of confidence. So make sure that you are giving directives and not begging or asking questions and asking students if they want to do things. Do not react to students goofing off with a smile unless it's time to goof off. Try to be more serious in the first half or first two-thirds of a class period and save the fun version of you for the later half of the period once things are going well. And just try to keep in mind business-like. It's not about being nice or mean. You're just getting down to business, and you care about their academic success, and that is why you're being a little bit of a wet blanket sometimes. So that's all I've got for you tonight. Uh, thank you so much. I'm really excited that 40 people are here. It's really awesome. Uh, whimsical teacher, I saw that you invited people, and I know that you're on Periscope a lot, so thanks a lot for doing that. That's really nice of you to invite people. And anybody who came in here uh, because she invited you, thank you. Um, I've seen you on Periscope before. I think your energy is fantastic. And I have watched Sheila Jane a ton, and I just think she's super positive. And so um, I am a, I'm a 
Periscope novice right now. So I'm just really excited to be here. Thank you guys so much. I'm going to be continuing to try to do this every Tuesday night and to empty my email <laughs> inbox out because I've got so many questions that I can't answer simply and quickly. So, And I do have a catch page, K-A-T-C-H dot M-E slash Cult of Pedagogy, and that's got all of my replays for as long as catch exists. So thank you so much. I am going to head out now. Have a great Tuesday night.